the final session of this two-day conference. This is the way forward, profound transformation in needed, possible, and beneficial for all. And we, this will be moderated by the co-conveners, Ms. Bahare Seyeri, Senior Sustainable Development Officer at UN Develop uh, Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Ms. Seyeri. Over to you. Good afternoon, good evening, colleagues, and welcome to this final session of the conference, which is about the way forward. In this session, we have the opportunity to hear from a number of speakers and participants um, about the main key, key takeaways that they took from some of the sessions uh, over the last two, year, two days. So I would like to call upon um, a number of speakers who can um, give us the, the key points from some of the sessions uh, over the last two days. Uh, Ms. Um, Doris Agebibi, could you please come to the podium? is the energy analyst from the Energy Commission of Ghana. Welcome. Mr. Kowon Singh, Chief Executive Officer, 3R Waste Foundation. <laughs> Mr. Junichi Fujino, Principal Researcher and Program Director of Integrated Sustainability Center from the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. Ms. Lina Srivastava, Deputy Director General for Science Interna International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. <laughs> Mr. Wataru Suzuki from the Secretariat of the Convention on Biological Diversity. Thank you for joining us. You have each um, been a speaker in, in one of the sessions today, and uh, we would like to hear from you what are your main takeaways from those sessions. So, uh, Mr. Suzuki, over to you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much for um, inviting me for, for this um, session to share my takeaway. So uh, we had a discussion about Nexus, and uh, it was a very um, interesting and inspiring discussion uh, we had. Uh, we have um, seven guiding questions, and uh, we um, discuss about a very really wide variety of topics from health, environment, um, climate, smart agriculture, biodiversity, and um, nexus um, among those uh, issues. So, so uh, the takeaways, it is uh, quite interesting that we um, started with the um, maybe success, uh, successful uh, good good cases uh, first, and then came to very difficult part of challenges and how we can deal uh, with those things. So um, we discuss about nature-based uh, solutions um, and other um, climate smart approaches. And I, I would say um, one takeaway is to maybe we need to um, talk about our um, global challenges in same language. Not only climate change, not only biodiversity, but maybe from the perspective of um, sustainability and uh, inclusiveness. So that's, that's my takeaway. <laughs> 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Suzuki. Thank you for accepting to be the rapporteur for, for that session. Um, Lina, over to you. Thank you, uh, Bahari. We just finished the session, uh, parallel session 2.2 on harnessing climate SDG synergies and co-benefits while closing the ambition gap. Uh, it was a pretty lively session, very engaged uh, speakers, all of them. We had about eight, I think, in total. And uh, the, the broad takeaways, I mean, they represented obviously a very diverse set of uh, expertise, right from knowledge generation in the IPCC process to supporting the NDCs to uh, implementation of some of the uh, mitigation projects and some of the synergies that we have been talking about. I think at a broad level, if I was to summarize, I found that there was a, a huge recognition of synergies at various levels in the goals that we are talking about, climate and SDG goals, as well as within SDG goals, and of course within or across mitigation and adaptation as well. There was a recognition of synergies that exist in finance, and I'll come to that in a bit as well as across scales of operation. There was an emphasis on the need for better data on capturing these synergies uh, and also representation uh, of the data as well as capacity building uh, for capturing synergies and institu institutional strengthening for being able to uh, realize the synergies that we are talking about. Um, quite a few speakers spoke about the fact that we need to better mainstream uh, the synergies between climate change and SDGs and, much, uh, and need to provide a much greater visibility to such synergies. The importance of carbon pricing was highlighted by a number of speakers. Uh, the need for a better understanding of just transitions, and I think this speaks directly to the issue of synergies, was also emphasized by no less than Jim Skia, who's a co-chair of Working Group 3, which is on mitigation. Uh, but yes, he did speak about both just transitions as well as the fact that adaptation has a much greater challenge in mobilizing uh, finance than, than mitigation has. Um, public participation, the role of public participation was emphasized as also the role of public finance in leveraging uh, private finance uh, for being able to exploit also the synergies. Um, the, the financing gap, of course, is much bigger for adaptation, as I mentioned. Some speakers felt that there was a very big financial gap that existed. However, others felt that there was enough money, but we did not have proper direction on the use of this money that needs to be addressed. But the bottom line of, uh, of our session was that the visibility for synergies needs to be enhanced and needs to be emphasized at all scales. Thank you. Many thanks, Lina. Dimitri, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Bahare. Um, so, about the parallel session 2.1, uh, we talk about overcoming barriers, financing, technology, and innovation. And this session is moderated by the um, Mr. Yasu Takahashi, Executive Director of the IGS. And then we have one keynote speaker, and then I had um, uh, the invited speakers and one commentator. It's a big panel. And then, uh, yeah, my um, colleague Eric kindly prepared a good note for me, and so I'd like to read it out. Uh, number one, SDG 13 on climate change is interlinked with many other core development priorities, including biodiversity, air quality, health, and education. Acting on these interlinkages can accelerate action on climate change and the SDGs. Number two, why there are market, investment, and governance barriers to acting on these interrelationships and harnessing climate and development finance, these can be overcome. Number three, some of the ways that these barriers can be overcome include investing in millennials, youth, reducing environmentally harmful subsidies and motivating businesses to consider biodiversity and climate risks across value and supply chains. Number four, as highlighted in the conference background note, overcoming these barriers, we also require creating an enabling environment that promotes 
transformation in our energy and socio-economic systems. Number five, an emerging integrated approach that can help redesign our socio-economic systems and bring more finance to climate, biodiversity, and other development needs is a circulating and ecological sphere, CES. And from my side, um, yeah, we have a very good commentator, um, the uh, Yurika uh, uh, Mori, uh, the GIPS, and then uh, she kindly share her view like uh, um, the eco access, uh, eco participation by the like uh, vulnerable people, indigenous, or, or, and also youth, and then uh, how we can make enabling environment for all the people, for the, for the future people to develop our future. And so I'd like to include this point and then how we can have norm shifting um, through these kind of um, support and then also the, our responsibility. Thank you very much. Thank you, Junichi. <laughs> Mr. Singh, over to you. Thank you very much. I think uh, the session 1.2 focused on ensuring just transitions, enabling empowerment, and enhancing knowledge and skills. I think the prominent discussion revolved around some of the key questions that we really took up. Uh, the main thrust was that how really can win-win solutions and just transition be better developed so that all stakeholders can really expect to benefit. We all know that carbon inequality is increasing and there is a need for addressing this trend and reducing this inequality is a very, very major and key issue that was really taken up. There is also a strong underrepresentation of many of the stakeholder groups which really need to be empowered. And uh, how we can really engage and involve these stakeholders, particularly in the decision making process. There is a role which is recognized for the capacity building and knowledge platforms. But very surely, the climate-related decision-making process is getting off track, and we really need to work for ensuring that nobody is left behind. The session, of course, was moderated, I would say that, by Mr. Akio Takemoto, the program head of the UNU Institute for Advanced Study of Sustainability. And we had, in one sense, a keynote opening remarks by Madam Shinobo Yume Yamaguchi. And there were several statements also, you know, from, uh, from some of the, you know, international organizations, including ILO and uh, other several organizations. But in nutshell, if I may just like to say that, uh, you know, the focus was mainly that we really have to need to act faster and link adaptation with mitigation and sustainable development. Climate resilient development links the limiting of emissions, warming levels, and climate risks with planetary health, human and ecosystem flourishing. Sustainable development dimensions like equity and justice, poverty and ecosystem health are at the center of climate action and they are not just desirable goals but essential for effective actions. The magnitude and rate of climate change and associated risks depend strongly on near-term mitigation and adaptation actions. So therefore, there are several, I would say that recommendations that the group have really come up. We certainly would like to detail them out for preparing a formal document. 
which I think we'll be submitting to the organizers, basically. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you very much. Doris, over to you, our last rapporteur. Hello. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to report on section 1.3, power section 1.3, forging partnerships for synergetic action. I really love this session so much because it delves right into the heart of issues that we were facing today. I mean, this session was brought to life by Hans when he, he underscored the, the problem we have now with Russia and Ukraine, because how can two countries at war forge partnerships? That was the main question. If we have to have synergetic actions, we need peace building. And that was at the core of what was discussed because peace building is the basis for which we can have partnerships and have synergetic actions. Um, down to it, everybody's talked about the partnerships from their angles, um, but most of the things that we discussed boil down to not pushing the agenda too far because we all started saying 2050, 2030, 2060, but the question is, how many of us will be here when it's 2050 or 2060? How many of us will be accountable for the 2050s and the long term? So although we're gonna have long-term targets, we need to bring them a bit forward, bring medium-term targets, shorter-term targets before we go all the way to the long-term targets. But of the partnerships that was taken, critical on it was the fact that partnerships need to be a win-win situation. And that, as I believe, at the back of Article 6 is going to help to do more of those things. But partnership needed to be one that benefits both parties. And in giving partnerships, we need to come up with climate actions and implementation plans for those partnerships, because that is the only way that the action that will come out of the partnerships will become synergetic. Um, we, we actually delve more into what should be and what should not be. Um, what, why we should be giving so much funds to Africa, um, or why should Africa be, be always the point of the conversation. But it came back to the fact that if we bring partnerships on board and we make it investment towards what the goal should be, and not just grants or funds, that is how we are able to see an implementation and an action that results in a synergetic action. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doris, and thanks to all our rapporteurs for highlighting some of the key takeaways from the sessions um, today. Um, you can now return to your seats. Thank you. Um, the next segment includes report back from the youth. And on behalf of the co-conveners, we are very pleased to see a large participation from youth at this conference. And we're happy to have a report back from the youth representatives. So um, I will now call on the youth representatives who will give us their report. Um, Ms. Chika Suzuki, who is the co-secretary general from the Japan Youth Platform for Sustainability. I believe you're sitting um, somewhere in the audience, we have Mr. We have Mr. Hiroyoshi Uchida, Principal Policy Advocacy Advisor, Climate Youth Japan, and we have Ms. Kotoko Yadomaru, the President of Change Our Next Decade. Um, I believe uh, Ms. Kotoko is joining us online. Thank you, everyone. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, we would like to thank this great opportunity. I am Chika Suzuki, a co-secretary general of Japan Youth Platform for Sustainability. So in our common future, published in 1987, Sustainable development is defined as meeting the needs of present without compromising the needs of future generation. So we, the youth, uh, propose to create a social new norm for creating sustainable society and, uh, with discussion of multi-stakeholders, including youth, and also to foster the new norm in this international society. And this proposal is made divided into three parts. So I would like to share the first part. First part. In first part, we propose that we propose to UNDISA and UNFCCC, uh, who is uh, co-coordinators of the Synergy Conference, 
um, to provide a youth provide a space for youth participation in preparatory uh, for this synergy conference, and also to um, to that uh, I, we propose that this outcome of this synergy conference to be included in major international conferences such as HOPF, G720, and also COP. All right, so could you please uh, introduce the next part, Kotoko? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, I'm Kotoko Yadomaru, the president of Change Our Next Decade. For part two of our proposal, we are claiming the necessity for policies and norm making that go beyond the SDGs and climate change and incorporate synergies in terms of biodiversity and resilience. To do so, we believe that measures should be discussed from both perspectives of climate change and biodiversity. Furthermore, to promote new norms, global issues should be looked from different perspectives and question, to question the obvious. In addition, we also believe that a place to discuss specific measures that take into account participation and concerns of communities affected and related to the transition to a more sustainable economic, cultural, and political activities of locals is significant too. Overall, we believe that as we take both climate and biodiversity into consideration, we should, to, we should look and think on the issues from a diverse perspective. Then, Hiroyoshi, please explain part three. Over to you. Thank you. I'm Hiroshi Uchida from Climate is Japan called, CY, called CYJ. I'll talk about the third part, meaningful youth participation. In this, part, in this part, we have two important uh, arguments in this third part. The first one is use, we use uh, important stakeholders of future societies. So we want to be included, included and invited in policy decision making processes. The second one is we are vulnerable sector compared to other sectors. That, so therefore, um, it is not enough for youth to just have seats uh, in, crime, uh, in international conferences in order, in order to actively engage in international conferences and policy decision-making processes in a meaningful way. We need your understanding for us and proportion, uh, promotion for not only opportunities, but also financial and educational support. Finally, we want to keep in mind that society has a mandate to support and listen to youth, not only youth, but also those who are not able to give their voices now. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for the beautiful reports um, of the youth and uh, for the very concise recommendations in terms of the way forward and uh, youth engagement. Um, I believe we now move towards the second part of this session and I will hand it back to Aaron to introduce the next set of speakers over to you. Thank you, Ms. Saidi. So the second part of the session involves um, the presentation of the conference summary, as well as the closing remarks. So um, we would like to invite the following people onto the stage. Mr. Hiroshi Ono, Vice Minister for Global Environmental Affairs of the Minister, uh, Ministry of the Environment, Japan. Uh, Ms. Xiaomeng Shen, Vice Rector of the United Nations University and Director of the United Nations University Institute for Environment and Human Security, UNUEHS. We would also like to invite Mr. Kazuhiko Takeuchi, 
president of the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies, IGIS. And last uh, but not least, Mr. Minoru Takada, team leader for energy at UN DESA. So to begin the presentation of the conference summary by the co-conveners, I would like to invite Ms. Bahare Sayeri to the stage, to the podium. Over to you, Ms. Sayeri. Thank you. On behalf of the co-conveners, this is a, a brief summary of the main messages and recommendations for the way forward. The conference was co-convened by the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs and the Secretariat of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. And it was hosted by the Ministry of the Environment of Japan in partnership with the United Nations University and the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. The conference was attended by around 2,000 participants in virtual and in-person formats, including more than 130 speakers from over 100 countries around the world. Um, some of the main key messages um, that we um, have seen and heard from the deliberations over the last two days. Ramping up action on synergistic opportunities to achieve the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement is needed now more than ever. Evidence clearly suggests that we are not on track to achieve these two critical agendas. There is also an increasing pool of evidence that suggests delivering win-win outcomes for climate action and the SDGs is entirely possible. But the full potential of such synergistic outcomes can only be realized if deliberate action is taken. For example, the latest IPCC report shows that if we take decisive climate action now, there's potential to not only advance the SDGs immediately, but also gain tremendous development co-benefits in the long term, such as 43 trillion in economic output by 2070. Realizing the SDGs while accelerating progress towards a climate smart net zero future requires getting the whole of government and whole of society on board. Active engagement of line ministries as well as subnational and local authorities in integrated planning and implementation is critical. Meaningful engagement of youth, civil society, academia, the private sector and indigenous peoples is also vital. Just transition and leaving no one behind should be at the center of integrated policy and program planning and implementation. Climate action should prioritize the needs of marginalized, poor and vulnerable communities, as well as those who will be impacted the most by transformational pathways. At the same time, we should strengthen national and local development and climate strategies, including the NDCs, building on existing integrated approaches such as circulating and ecological spheres aimed at advancing SDGs and climate action. Enhancing capacities of various stakeholders to pursue synergistic implementation of climate and SDGs agenda is crucial. This includes enhancing capacities to identify uh, opportunities and overcoming barriers such as technical, financial, planning, organizational, and behavioral. Now, some recommendations on the way forward. Participants highlighted that synergistic implementation of climate action and the SDGs should be based on strengthening the evidence base for synergistic action. The preparations for the conference have greatly benefited from the guidance that was provided by the technical advisory group. Building on the work of this network and in collaboration with other stakeholders, a comprehensive global analytical synthesis report on climate action and the SDGs may be considered to fill existing knowledge gaps and provide scientific underpinnings for accelerated synergistic action towards 2030 and beyond. 
convening multi-stakeholder dialogues at all levels, facilitating global, regional, and thematic exchanges of practice on advancing climate and SDG synergies, for example, in the context of future UNFCCC regional climate weeks or other re relevant events, can strengthen knowledge sharing and communities and communities of practices tailored to local conditions and needs. Convening the next conference and you at UN headquarters in New York would help contribute to fostering alignment with the high level political forum and the SDG summit. Enhancing integrated planning. Existing instruments such as nationally determined contributions, voluntary national reviews, and national biodiversity strategies and action plans offer opportunities for integrated planning and synergistic implementation on climate action and the SDGs. Partnerships for transformation. We need all actors, government, the private sector, civil society, academia, communities, and individuals to work together to deliver on the full potential of synergistic action to achieve the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement. In particular, youth must play a game-changing role in a multi-decade journey of transportation, transformation across the world. Building on the successful Youth Day at the conference, providing further meaningful engagement opportunities for youth is necessary. And lastly, informing key intergovernmental processes on climate and the SDGs. Relevant global milestones, such as the SDG Summit in 2030, 2030 and 2027, the High-Level Political Forum, the United Nations Framework Convention um, of Climate Change Conference of the Parties, the COPs, the Convention of Biological Diversity Conference of the Parties, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and the ongoing global stocktaking efforts under the Paris Agreement must be leveraged to ma mainstream and strengthen synergistic action at all levels. The output document should be fed this to, the, to these upcoming milestones. This is a brief summary of the main key messages and the way forward. There will be a more comprehensive summary of the proceedings of the conference, and uh, both products will be published on the conference web website in due course. Many thanks. Thank you. So now we will begin with the closing remarks. First, we would like to invite Mr. Ono, Vice Minister for Global Environmental Affairs, Ministry of the Environment, Government of Japan. Thank you very much for your introduction and as well as nice and concise summary of this uh, meeting and good evening everyone and as introduced my name is uh, Hiroshi Ono, uh, Vice Minister of Global Environmental Affairs, Ministry of the Environment, Japan. First of all, I would like to thank the co-organizers of this conference namely the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs and the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Secretariat, as well as our, our collaborators, the United Nations University and the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies for their support in successfully hosting and concluding the third global climate and SDG Synergy Conference in Tokyo. I also thank all of the speakers and the audience for their participation, both in person and online, and for making this conference a success. This conference aimed to share effective initiatives to simultaneously achieve the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal of the Paris Agreement and the SDGs. The main takeaways of the parallel sessions, proposal from the youth, and the co conveners conference summary have captured a variety of good practices and proposals from 
various stakeholders. Taking this, these into account, Japan would like to take further actions, and it is important to disseminate and replicate these good examples around the world. I'd also like to stress that market mechanisms under the Article 6 of the Paris Agreement could be an excellent tool to realize synergies between the Paris Agreement and the SDGs. Japan is committed to take the lead to foster a high-integrity carbon market globally. As introduced during the special event on the first day of the conference, Japan is committed to achieve net zero emission by 2050 by promoting economy-wide and multi-sectoral initiatives and actions, one of which is the establishment of decarbonization leading areas. This initiative aims to achieve decarbonization by 2030, 20 years prior to 2050, while enhancing economic growth and social well-being. Japan is also promoting the concept of the regional, circular, and ecological sphere to promote SDGs at local levels. This is to foster the better utilization and local circular, circu circulation of resources, such as renewable energy, food, and other natural capitals enabling the sustainable and self-reliant regions which interact and collaborate each other. Through such initiatives, Japan strives to achieve the goal of the Paris Agreement and the SDGs simultaneously. We hope that similar initiatives will follow globally. Finally, and moving, and moving ahead, I'd like to make every effort to build a linkage between the outcomes of this meeting and forthcoming high-level international fora, such as the G7 presided by Japan next year and the UN SDGs Summit to be held in the fall of 2023. Let me conclude my closing remarks by hoping that this meeting will lead to the promotion of synergies between the 1.5 degrees Celsius goal of the Paris Agreement and the SDGs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ono, for those wonderful remarks. Next, we have Ms. Shen, Vice Rector of the UNU and Director of the UNU Institute for Environment and Human Security. Dear Vice Minister, dear participants and dear colleagues, it's been a rich learning experience in the past two days for me. I want also to thank the organizers for this wonderful event. And I also want to thank Professor Yamaguchi for inviting me to say a couple of words at this closing session. A lot has been said in the past two days. I heard that we're not on track with the SDGs and we need more climate action. I also heard a lot of best practices and commitments from local communities to national governments, from youth engagement to engagement of private sectors. I found the speech of the governor of the Kana, Kanagawa Prefecture, Mr. Yuji Kuroiwa, at yesterday's opening session especially inspiring. The Inochi concept is a holistic notion for a good life, which highlights the connection of people and the harmony with nature. While this is unique in its own right, it also exists in many other cultures and societies. For instance, Ubuntu in Africa, Juan Vivier in Latin America, all of these concepts emphasize the interconnectedness of people and harmony with nature. It is indeed fundamental to understand 
how independent we all are on each other and on our mother nature. Once we have understood this deep connection, we will be able to change our mindset and our behavior and become custodians of nature and stewards of the only planet we have. United Nations Universities strives to contribute to such understanding with our research. For instance, our sister institute, IAS, with its operational unit in Kanasawa, they look at biodiversity and sustainable ways of life. Also, my own institute, UNU EHS, based in Germany, looks at interrelationship between human well-being and sustainability. While uh, with a deeper understanding about such interdependence, we will start giving nature back more than we take from it. By doing so, we will be able to achieve permanent resilience as the UNFCCC's Resilience Frontiers advocate. Done by the Japanese artist beautifully yesterday. And in that bountiful country where you are, surely there is no need for any weapons. Abundance and peace are possible if we all live sustainably. The imagination of a utopian future in this song gives me hope. Hope was a word mentioned by many throughout the two days. Hope gives us the power to imagine a utopian future in the first place. The poet Emily Dickinson once wrote, hope is the thing with feathers that's purchased in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. I wish all of us a future of abundance and peace. We together can make it happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Shen, for those beautiful remarks. Now we have Mr. Kazuhiko Takeuchi, president of IGES. This thing is guests, uh, uh, friends, and colleagues. It is of great significance that this third global conference to strengthening synergies between the Paris Agreement and the SDGs has been held in Japan, co convened by UNDESA and the UNFCCC, and hosted by the Ministry of the Environment, Government of Japan. As a former senior vice director of the United Nations University, and uh, as the current president of IGES, it has been my utmost pleasure to have been able to support this globally meaningful conference. We are now in the midst of the decisive decade of action, and we must make drastic change by 2030. It is imperative to accelerate our efforts to achieve the ambitious global goals for biodiversity that is nature positive in biodiversity by 2030, in parallel to the net zero CO2 emission goal by 2050. I believe that taking these actions should not be to a society where people are forced to endure hardships, but rather it should be seen as an excellent opportunity to create a newly resilient and prosperous society. The global COVID-19 pandemic has reminded us that continuing globalization and the destruction of nature pose a significant threat to humanity as we have recently seen in the upsurge in zoonotic diseases. 
What we need is a new paradigm of nature-human relations, one that integrates the concept of planetary boundaries to save the Earth from crisis and planetary health to restore the health of both the planet and the people. It has begun to integrate scientific findings such as that carried out by the IPCC, EPBES, GEO, and other organizations. Going forward, these findings must be reflected in international policies and linked to the practice of sustainable community development in our local communities. As president of IGES, I intend to make every effort to contribute to strengthening this interface between science, policy, and society. Finally, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to all the participants at this conference, both in Japan and overseas. I also extend my special thanks to those involved in the planning and organization of the event who have worked tirelessly to ensure the resolving success of this conference. Thank you very much, and I wish all the best for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Takeuchi. So closing the conference, we have last but certainly not least, Mr. Minoru Takara, team leader of, for energy at UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs. Over to you. Thank you, Aaron. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. His Excellency Vice Minister, uh, distinguished delegates, colleagues and friends, my heartfelt thanks to all of you who have made this conference really a truly inspiring event. I mean, looking at this situation, it's uh, really cross the miracle that we're actually meeting here. <laughs> So uh, really, uh, it's you who made this happen. And you came here and energized the conference. So really, thank you. And 20,000 people who have, uh, 2,000 people from 100 countries who have participated online. Thank you so much. Uh, it is you that who share your knowledge and your passion. That's why we're successful here. On behalf of the conveners, we'd like to really thank really the host of this conference, the Ministry of the Environment of Japan, successfully bringing all the things together to make this conference happen in a way that is a great success here. You know, uh, Vice Minister, you are very lucky. You have Oisan, Kama, San, their staff. They are truly wonderful, first class bureaucrats. <laughs> bureaucrats who can make things happen no matter what. Thank you very much, really, appreciate it. And then our sincere thanks to the United Nations University staff and the vice rector and you know, all the staff over there who really sort of have to secure this room. I know that during this time, it would not have been so easy to secure these conference facilities, but this happened because of you really wholehearted thank you uh, from the co-conveners. And of course, to the ideas, uh, you know, it is Professor Takeuchi's vision who made us come here. So thank you, Professor Takeuchi, who actually led your vision with your vision, leading us coming here, and Junichi, who is sitting standing, Junichi is pretty stand up. I think this person deserves a special sort of recognition. Here. Passion, passion, passion. Passion actually sort of make us drive here. Occasionally, it's a little too passionate, but that's fine. Uh, I think, you know, uh, this made it happen. This is, thank you, Junichi, and thank you, I just stuck calling here. Uh, the, you know, stage. Over there, you know, you can see that the backstage over there. I went there a couple of times. It's really, really, it's a massive operation here in this room and in all the conference rooms up there. Without their dedication, I don't know whether they slept even an hour last two days. So really, thank you very much, stage colleagues over there. Your dedication made it happen. Thank you very much. I can see there are lots of security colleagues over there and volunteers. And of course, you know, youth and students who are sitting in this room and beyond. You actually brought energy here. Thank you so much. You also deserve special recognition here. 
distinguished delegates, colleagues, we started with one premise here, the synergistic implementation of the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement can produce a tremendous benefits to advance, the, uh, to advance, you know, or the, uh, to ad I'm sorry, to advance our actions toward the SDGs and the climate action in a way to be able to contribute our society for people, for planet, for prosperity, and for peace and for partnerships. Now, you have shared your knowledge during this conference, and you have spoken about urgency, about, you know, all the, about the te steps that we need to take, and ambition required in all action, in policy, and implementation, and finance. You have also spoken about practical solutions that are already being implemented, and also ongoing innovation on climate action and all of the SDGs. Thank you very much for your sharing all those sort of innovations. This conference has shown humanity's capacity for development and progress, but we have a great deal of work to do to take decisive actions and also to make transformation that is needed to achieve sustainable development. We all need to step up. And everybody, every stakeholder has a role to play. Government, business, civil society, academia, the youth, and all other stakeholders. You also need to step up and do all our part. The people of the world are looking to us because we had a conference, we have a responsibility to step up and lead by example. So this is a time that we are gonna be able to do so. So I hope that we'll be able to work together over the many years to come to deliver hope, opportunities, and sustainable development for all. Distinguished delegates, colleagues, and friends, on behalf of the co-conveners, I now declare the third global conference on strengthening synergies between the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, Paris Agreement of Climate Change closed. Thank you very much.